Ibrahim Traoré is a Burkina Bay military officer who has been the interim leader of Burkina Faso as of the 30th September 2022 coup d'état that ousted interim president Paul Henry Damiba. At age 36, Traoré is currently the second youngest serving state leader in the world and the youngest serving president. Traoré joined the army of Burkina Faso in 2009 and graduated from the Georgian Amano Military Academy. He was sent to Morocco for anti-aircraft training before being transferred to an infantry unit in Kaya. Promoted to lieutenant in 2014, Trahare joined MINUSMA. In 2018, he was cited as one of the MINUSMA soldiers who showed courage during major rebel attacks in the Tombutu region. He subsequently returned to Burkina Faso, where he assisted in operations against the escalating jihadist insurgency. In 2020, he was promoted to captain. Trahare later claimed that he became disillusioned with his country's leadership around this time, as he saw the widespread lack of equipment of Burkina Bay soldiers, while politicians were handing out suitcases of money for bribery. He gradually became the spokesman for soldiers stationed in the north, who were frustrated over their government. Trahore was part of the group of army officers that supported the January 2022 Burkina Faso coup d'état and brought the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration military junta to power. Many supporters of the January coup became dissatisfied with the performance of Paul Henry Damiba, the junta's leader, regarding his inability to contain the jihadist insurgency. The dissatisfaction about the situation was highest among younger officers who fought against the rebels at the front lines. In addition, there were delays in pay for the Cobra troops. As president, Traoré maintained his enigmatic and very formal behavior for which he had already been known before rising to power. He kept tight control of his communication and carefully tried to present himself as a proper war leader, possibly to avoid the poor public image of his predecessors. In February 2023, Traoré's government expelled the French forces assisting in fighting the local insurgency from Burkina Faso. He subsequently declared that they wanted to look at other horizons because they wanted a win-win partnership, supporting the diversification of Burkina Faso's international partnerships. Shortly after, Traoré's government expressed support for a federation with Mali and both invited Guinea. All three countries are under military leadership, and if it were to become a union, it would be the largest country ruled by military junta. To replace French military support, Traoré forged closer ties with Turkey and Russia, adding Iran to the list now. In April, he declared a general mobilization of the population to support the military, as rebel forces continued to increase the rate of their attacks. Traoré publicly pledged to reconquer all rebel-held areas and that there would be no negotiations until the insurgency had been greatly weakened. In the following month, Traoré questioned the planned restoration of democracy for 2024, stating that elections could not be held unless the insurgents were pushed back and the security situation had been improved. He insisted that security was more important than the said elections. On 27 January 2024, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger announced their plan to withdraw from membership of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, despite repeated efforts at reconciliation. Burkina Faso strengthened its political and military cooperation with Mali and Niger, although as the ECOWAS withdrawal shows, this has come at the expense of stronger regional, and in some cases, international ties. Suggesting that more changes may occur coming from him, the junta leader mentioned that things were unfolding and that more changes were incoming. They envisioned breaking all ties that kept them in slavery. Captain Trahare also clarified that Burkina Faso has no plans to rejoin ECOWAS, saying their move was an irreversible one. To justify their exit from the economic community of West Africa, the three countries, now collectively known as the Alliance of Sahel States, S, accused the regional organization of not assisting them against jihadists and deviating from the ideals of its founding fathers and pan-Africanism. This alliance gives them political cover and support in the face of growing pressure from ECOWAS 
and other regional institutions to comply with their transition deadlines. Experience shows that the number of well-wishers after coups d'etat is always close to zero. Captain Ibrahim Trahore was no different as he had attempted coups since his rise to power. On 26 September 2023, dissatisfied elements of the military unsuccessfully attempted to overthrow Trahore. Burkina Faso's military rulers said in a statement that army officers and others had planned to seize power and plunge the country into chaos. Spokesman for the ruling military, Runtalba Jean Emmanuel, in a statement said that officers and other alleged actors involved in the attempt at destabilization had been arrested and others were actively sought. The country's military prosecutor later said that four people had been arrested and two were on the run. An investigation has been opened based on credible allegations about a plot against state security implicating officers, the prosecutor said. Despite the attempted coups, Captain Ibrahim Traoré did not feel the need to stop doing what he has been doing to the betterment of his country and Africa as a whole. In November 2023, Burkina Faso's Council of Ministers approved the construction of the country's very first gold refinery. This marked a significant development in Burkina Faso's gold sector, aiming to capitalize on the nation's growing gold mining industry. Trahare seeks to gain more control over its gold resources by refining gold domestically rather than exporting unrefined materials. By doing this, they would increase government revenue and economic benefits from the gold sector. The refinery is set to create 100 new jobs and 5,000 new indirect jobs, with the refinery producing about 400 kilograms of gold daily. In January 2024, Burkina Faso marked a significant development in its mining sector, with the inauguration of a revolutionary mine tailings treatment plant built with domestically developed technology. This plant aims to improve resource recovery and environmental practices. The focus is on efficiently extracting metals from various mine tailings, including fine coal, slag, ash, and acid concentrates. This process promises to minimize waste and maximize the value extracted from Burkina Faso's mining resources, while also reducing environmental pollution associated with conventional disposal methods. The inauguration signifies Burkina Faso's commitment to an endogenous approach to its mining sector, emphasizing domestic expertise and technology for responsible resource management. The success of this plant has the potential to boost Burkina Faso's mining industry through increased profitability, promote environmental sustainability through reduced waste, and advance domestic technological innovation within the mining sector. In February 2024, Traoré ordered the suspension of the issuance of export permits for small-scale private gold production. This move was reportedly aimed at tackling illicit trade and cleaning up the artisanal gold sector. This illicit trade involves smuggling gold out of the country, avoiding taxes and bypassing regulations. This suspension aims to crack down on such activities and ensure that exported gold is properly documented and contributes to government revenue. The government hopes this suspension will establish a more formal and accountable system for exporting small-scale produced gold. On 29 July 2023, following the 2023 Russia-Africa summit, Trahari said that the people of his country support Russia and communicated that a decision had been made to reopen the Russian embassy, which was closed in 1992. Recently, Russia decided to assist with the situation of insecurity in Burkina Faso. A contingent of Russian military personnel flew into Burkina Faso's capital Ouagadougou in what appeared to be the first significant deployment of Russian troops to the West African country. A Russian contingent of 100 people will ensure the safety of the country's leader, Ibrahim Trahore, and the Burkina Bay people from terrorist attacks, and shortly after, the units will be replenished with another 200 military personnel from Russia. The military specialists will train Burkina Bay forces and patrol dangerous areas. As partnering with Russia was not enough, Burkina Faso and Iran have been working lately on ways to take advantage of their differences 
and build partnerships that would benefit both parties, unlocking unrealized economic potential. Burkina Faso will seemingly be gaining a lot from this partnership as Iranian oil minister. Javed Oji mentioned in September of last year that Iran will contribute to building an oil refinery in Burkina Faso and will supply the country with the oil products it needs. Ever since Trahari came to power, he kept distancing himself from France and other Western countries. The West is not happy that Trahore is trying to make his country 100% independent and free from the Western captive. There have been great African leaders who tried to change their countries years ago, and because of their great minds, they were often threatened and eventually killed through coups. Now, the West is behind Ibrahim Trahore, who is following in the footsteps of his predecessor, Thomas Sankara, who ruled Burkina Faso in the 1980s. From 2023 till now, Traoré has succeeded in escaping about seven assassination attempts, all certainly planned by the West, the most recent being that of February 2024. It was allegedly reported that some activists and soldiers involved in the attempt had received funding for it. The West definitely would not want Burkina Faso to be alone, worst as Traoré keeps forging alliances with other countries Mali and Niger, and also Russia and Iran. Would they keep attempting coups to ask Trahari? Or how many more assassination attempts might be incoming with the West's name written all over it? Stay with us as we keep bringing you more updates.